What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Roundtable Sports. This is your NFC North Roundtable NFL Week 8 previews. We will be predicting all four games within the division, getting the host take on what they think will happen in each and every game. Uh, shout out to Dosa Dion with the Detroit Lions, One Bar with the Minnesota Vikings, Basharaki with the Green Bay Packers, and Nick representing the Chicago Bears, fresh off of a bye. Before we get started, this stream is being powered by Bet US receive a 150% sign up bonus on your first deposit up to $2,000 using code YouTube150. All right, if you're looking for a new sports book, take advantage of Bet US. Bet US is so much more than just the sports book, it also has the live betting, the casino race book, and even Bet US TV, ladies and gentlemen. Go on to the site. Look at the odds. Check it out. If you want to place a bet, it's all there for you, parlays and all. All right? As you can see, it's already up. Minnesota favored by three points so far this week. You have the Detroit Lions favored by a whopping 11 points this week. The Green Bay Packers favored by four points against the Jags. And then the Chicago Bears two-point favorite. Go on with your favorite team, see what you like, and place your bets with BetUS right now. Make sure you gamble responsibly. If you have any addictions or issues with gambling, there are resources on the site that can help you as well. Let's dive right in, ladies and gentlemen. These games are going to be good this week. We're going to start out with the Chicago Bears because they are coming fresh off of a bye. They have to play a big team a team that is balling out this year and the washington commanders now we do know that Jaden daniels we don't know if he's actually going to play yet right now uh he could he may not that's going to be huge in this one but let's go around the table and talk about what we think in the score predictions one bar what do you have on the bears commanders yeah, I mean, Jaden Daniels is the only talker, really, if this is going to be a game or not. Because when you go from Jaden Daniels to Marcus Mariota, obviously there is a very, very large drop. Uh, Bears defense, I mean, the, the the Washington, they've been fantastic this year. There's no doubt about it. But, like, I'm assuming that Marcus Mariota is going to be the guy out there. And the Bears, Bears defense will be able to handle business. Their offense, you know, they're coming off uh, a bunch of wins. Caleb Williams look good. Swift is getting going. So, I got the Bears in this one, 20 to 13 over Washington. Even if if Daniels plays, played, I, I still might pick the Bears, but I'm going to, with the assumption that he's not. So that's my score, 20 13. 20 to 13. Now, what you got on it, Dion? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see if this is like, I mean, we've had some good statistical games from Caleb, but like what it looks like against a team like Washington that is known regardless of who's that quarterback, because the quarterback position, I feel like when for Washington is definitely a problem. Now, I do think that at, at points here, their defensive line could be a tough matchup for the Chicago offensive line. Like that's something that maybe could rear again, like that we were talking about early in the season that's kind of went away the last few weeks. This is a team that could bring that back to life. I'll be honest, I think it's going to be low scoring. I think that this is how Chicago is going to play better teams this season, and it's going to be kind of a back and forth who's going to find a way at the end and right now I got a slight lean towards Washington Washington has surprised me so far this season regardless of who's that quarterback now I understand Mariota played well against Carolina but they've surprised me on both sides of the ball I don't love their personnel defensively but I feel like they've gotten more out of it than expected and I just think that that looks like a playoff team right now that has a mission to go win that division I'm going to take them by a point 21-20 I'll take Washington 21-20 Washington Bass your takeaways and score prediction I'll say I, I think it's going to be Jane Daniels. Uh, you know, a rib injury, I've seen quarterbacks throw a flak jacket on and get out there. That's 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 what I said on Wednesday. That's what I'm saying here. So I hope he does play because I want to see Caleb Williams and I want to see Jaden Daniels, you know, first pick, second pick. Obviously, we want to see that. But I think the Chicago D matches up well, 16.8 points per game. That's fourth in the NFL. But the Washington offense, you know, 31.1 points per game, which is first in the NFL. I'm excited to watch Jalen Johnson versus Terry McLaurin. Um, I think the one way the, the commanders can start to really move the ball against Chicago is using tight end Zach Ertz. The Bears allow a 100 plus rating to opposing tight ends. Caleb Williams has also been great the last three games. Washington doesn't have a great pass defense. They allow a 107.4 quarterback rating, which is 30th in the NFL. Not great against the run. They allow 5.2 yards per carry, in the uh, which is 30th for the NFL. I think if it's Daniels, I'm going to pick the commanders, and it's going to be 35-28. But if it's Mariota, I got the Bears 28-24. Nick, tell us what you got on your team. Sorry, TV was uh, taking my notes 
because every time <laughs> every time I do that, I gotta make sure I hold everyone in check. No, I mean like obviously I want to see like everyone saying Jane Daniels versus Caleb Williams one versus two. Obviously, it's been a lot of talk over the internet like oh should the Bears have taken Jane and Daniels? Should they have taken Caleb Williams? Caleb Williams is progressing like crazy. He's you know coming up going into the bye like he was red hot over 650 passing yards. Nine are seven passing touchdowns, one interception, and he's going against one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL again in the Washington Commanders. But overall, it's just a bad defense as a whole. There are also the Commanders lost their defensive tackle pain for the rest of the season with that torn pack injury I was uh, reading about. So that's their best run defender, too. And DeAndre Swift's heating up. So this Bears offense is all progressing in the right direction against an already bad Washington Commanders defense. And then now they're going to be even worse without some of their top players. And then on top of it, the commander's offense, which has Jaden Daniels, is going against one of the best defenses in the NFL in the Chicago Bears, who hasn't let up more than 21 in the last 12 games. I'm feeling confident about this one. The last time the Bears were in Washington, we put up 41 points. And honestly, looking at it, I think the Bears are going to do something similar. Back-to-back games with 35-plus. Uh, on a three-game winning streak, uh, they're also nine and five in the last fourteen. I got the Bears winning this one, thirty-six to seventeen. Thirty-six to seventeen, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting. Oh, there we go. Um, let's move on to the next game of the week. Then we have the Green Bay Packers versus the Jacksonville. Jaguars. Now, this is a tricky one. We're going to go right back to Nick here. What's your thoughts? I mean, it, so it's in Jacksonville. Um, it's finally, I feel like the Packers have played only home games this year, Baz. Like, I don't know. Every time I watch them, I'm like, oh my God, they're always uh, at home. But they're in Jacksonville. But the Jaguars, man, they stink. Like, they're just <laughs> bad at football. Like, I, I know that they've got some defensive studs over there. They have Tank Bigsby, but. Doug Peterson is just a bad coach and the Packers just have a better coaching staff, obviously coming off a big win against the Texans, even though they're on the road, Packers fans travel really well. It's probably going to still feel like a Packers home game anyway. I'm just going to put it out there. I think the Packers are going to win this one 28, 17. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to have a tough day against that Packers secondary. And if tank Bigsby can have a day, it seems like it doesn't matter because even when these running backs have big days against the Packers defense the Packers still win. So I got the Packers winning this one. Interesting. What about you, one bar? It's funny with when it comes to the Packers Jags, and we're gonna talk about the, the Lions game here shortly. I started breaking this thing down. It's like, what's there to break down? These teams are horrible. Like the Packers should run the floor. I mean, it should wipe the floor with them. Uh, and they should, but out of any game this week in the north, like this is the one that just for some weird reasons just like could be an upset alert. I don't think it'll happen at all but like if they can shut down cj Stroud, they're gonna have no problem with trevor lawrence the only issue is like 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 nick said tank bigsby maybe he goes and runs for uh 200 yards or does something absolutely crazy something would have to be crazy for the jigs to beat the packers i think the packers win easy i, I think it's gonna be 30 to 20 but i think it's gonna be one of those scores that like it, it, it's not as close not even as close as that like the packers should win easily all right Dion, what do you have on it I, I'm a I there's a reason hey I'm not working for bet us man a four point spread is is insane you showed that there's no way man 31 to 10 Green Bay this is a disaster I don't know my my only thought is here is that maybe Josh Jacobs does like nothing in this game yeah you know, I remember giving Jacksonville's run defense some credit and then the Bears went out and smoked them I don't I don't think they have really anything else I can lean on here I'll take the Packers blowing them out man Bass take it away how do you see your team faring in this one um, I'm very confident in the Packers in this game. They're playing hot. I guess it just really depends what Jacksonville you get, or more importantly, what Trevor Lawrence you get. But again, we just saw what the Packers did against CJ Stroud. And the, the, the most important thing here is ja- the Jacksonville defense is bad, like plain and simple. They are 27.7 points per game, 30th in the NFL. I think Love's going to air it out in this game, maybe a four touchdown type of game. Um, Jags defense versus other quarterbacks this year, 113.7 rating. They've allowed 16 touchdowns, have one interception. So when we talk about Jordan Love throwing interceptions, like the Jags literally have one interception against quarterbacks this year. It's ridiculous. They're 28th versus tight ends, 29th versus wide receivers. The only thing they do good is stop the run, which they're fifth in in yards per carry. Um, now, I will say Trevor Lawrence is pretty good at throwing the ball deep. I think he's like the first quarterback or number one quarterback throwing the ball like 20 plus yards. So got to eliminate the big play there. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, the Packers should be able to win by two scores here against the Jags. I'm not worried about it being in Florida. You know, that was an old Packers philosophy thing with Aaron Rodgers that they always struggled in Florida. I don't see it happening here. Uh, 31-21 Green Bay. 
31 to 21 Green Bay. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on to the Minnesota Vikings versus the L.A. Rams, who are getting a few players back from injury. Uh, we're going to start here with Bass again. How do you see this one faring out for Minnesota? Yeah, I'm pretty excited to watch this uh, Thursday. So uh, Cooper Cup's back. Maybe Puka Naku is back. Does that do enough for the for the Rams? Stafford's not playing wonderfully. I don't think so. Um, the Rams have only scored 21 plus points once, and Minnesota allows 17.8 per game on defense. I think they just match up very well, and uh, the Minnesota defense should be able to uh, stop the Rams' offense with ease. And, and Stafford, more importantly, like Stafford's bad against the Blitz, an 83.9 rating. I think at the end of the day, they just have to stop Kyron Williams, which I think they can, and then just keep running Aaron Jones. I got Minnesota wiping them 31-17. Jesus. All right. Well, there you have it. Dion. what's your take on it? Yeah, it's it. I <laughs> I feel like the issue with this is after we play the team, I'm like super biased. Like, ooh, the Vikings are kind of trash. Maybe I should take the Rams. But no, I, it, that's not. It's not true. I mean, I didn't walk away feeling that way. And I think Bass just said it. Watch the Rams this year, and I really want to buy in because every time they're playing a North team, they play like all of us now. I'm like, come on, come over, Stafford, do some magic. And they have no magic. As it, they have no magic in their in their system whatsoever. I think they get blown out as well in this one. I got a twenty eight to fourteen. I just don't see how they put up points. Um, I want to root for the Rams. Hopefully, this is yeah. Love, there's it feels like every Thursday night game is terrible. I'd love to see a great Thursday night game. I just don't see it happening here. I'm taking I'm taking the Vikings. All right, Nick, what do you have on it? I mean, in LA, Sunday night or Thursday night football, but Minnesota, they're gonna want to you know kick the Rams' teeth in after their losses past weekend. Uh, by the way, I don't know who whispered it, but someone said, like, Jesus after uh, – <laughs> I heard that somewhere. So, um, yeah, I, I got Minnesota absolutely pouncing on the Rams. I think the Rams are finally starting to, you know, have a decline. It They just – even though they might have cut back, I just don't think that they're going to be able to take on the Vikings. I got the Vikings winning this one tomorrow night in L.A. Uh, I'll go 28 – I'll go 28-21. But I, I, I got I got like garbage time touchdowns out of the Rams to try to make a comeback. But Minnesota's got this in the bag. Man, oh man, one bar close this one out. Uh, just to be clear, that was me. Once I heard Dion say they're trash, so I just <laughs> I believe what I just heard. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it was funny when uh, when Baz was doing his breakdown. It's like everything to a T. It, it, it what's even weirder is he got my score prediction to a T. So like, it, it, here's the thing. The Vikings should beat the Rams. They probably will beat the Rams. Not a huge fan of a quick turnaround Thursday night game. Not a huge fan of a quick turnaround Thursday night game where you're going across the country. So, like, there, there are a few things that I'm a little bit worried about. But uh, I think it was Dion. You said it right. We, it's, we're like a perfect match for the Rams. I mean, Stafford sucks against the Blitz. This is going to be night and day compared to Goff. Uh, Stafford does not play well against the Blitz, and we are going to be bringing it. And the Rams, while they're 2-4, and four, they keep them close. Aside from, I, I think it was the Cardinals. Like every one of their games are weirdly close, uh, and and they'll get the running game going. They'll, they'll get that going. But we should really win. The, the Rams have some young bucks on that offensive line. Harrison Phillips, uh, kind of an underdog for this Vikings team. I, I expect him to get after it. But I, I I think the Vikings should really do some damage. I'm very curious to see how they come out after their first loss. Uh, it seemed like with Zimmer when he was coaching, we come after a loss, we just look dead. Like I hope we come out fired up, really pissed off, and just give it to the Rams like we should. And I had 31-17, just like Bess. 31 to 17. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. In the last game of the week, Detroit Lions versus the Tennessee Titans. Man, oh man, is this upset alert of the week? <laughs> One part, <laughs> take it away. Dude, I'm, I'm going to spend 10 seconds. 11 and a half spread. <laughs> Titans are already giving their players away. Yeah. This isn't going to be fun to watch. Dion, if you got yard work to do, go do some yard work. Like, there's no reason to watch this game. Uh, if Hennon Hooker isn't playing in this game by the end of it, I will be absolutely amazed. Like, they should just kick the living hell out of these guys. I got 35 to 10, and that 10, I don't even know how they get to 10. It's, it's, Lions are going to kill them. Man, oh, man, Nick. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to keep this under 25 seconds. Titans are bad. Lions are good. It's in Detroit. I got the Lions absolutely mopping the Titans with the floor. 42 to 3. Ooh, damn. Gross. Man. 
<laughs> best. Talk to I, me. I think the most interesting thing in this game would be if Mason Rudolph got hit in the head with a helmet again. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> this came back into the game because I'm not watching it. Let's be honest. If you're not a Titans fan, you're not a Lions fan, you're not watching it. The Titans gave up. They're trading Hopkins, Ernest Jones. They have no pass rush. The Lions score the second most in the league. Tennessee just gave up 34 to Buffalo. I I'm with you guys. 41-10. Oh my gosh. Dion. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Oh no. Why do I look like that? Hey, look. Dion froze. <laughs> he heard the story and he froze. Perfect. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hold up. Nah. He's That's so flabbergasted unreal. by these score predictions. It's unreal. You know what? I'll just be. Because I don't know what's going yeah, on. It doesn't matter. Look, man. Tell <laughs> All right. He's already hey, not I got, watching. I got, look, man. I. <laughs> I don't look. I think teams have had trouble covering the biggest spread of the week this year. I'll take 27 17. I think they keep it within 11, but I got the Lions winning it comfortably by 10. Man, this, I'm not going to lie. This game is so easily decided that it actually game. scares me. Like, this is a game that messed up everybody parlay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Wait, wait, TD, TD, remember how you said at the beginning that. of the show? I, I don't know if it was, maybe it was on Wednesday or it was today, but whoever loses this week is going to be a laughing stock uh, of us for Yes, oh, yes, no, sure. Could it you is. imagine? No. Man, oh, that, you know what, Jack? No, I can't imagine this one, though. I can't. I actually no. can't. Man. Oh, he's back. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> he came back for that comment. He's like, Will wait, Levis hang on got a him. Will Levis <laughs> shut him off. <laughs> is it Levis or is it Rudolph this week? I don't, I don't know. think it doesn't matter. Does it matter? Does it, I, mean, I don't think they have a quarterback Battle anymore. The they don't even play one. <laughs> oh, man. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is your NFC North Roundtable Week 8 predictions. Don't forget this stream is powered by BetUS. Take advantage of that 150% sign up bonus on your first deposit using code YouTube150, up to $2,000, by the way. All right. If you're looking for a new sports book, Bet US is the place to be. Thank you. We love you all. We'll see you next week. Good luck, fellas. We'll see. Hopefully, you go four and zero. If not, one of you guys getting clowned. We'll see you soon. <laughs> we are out.